Okay, good morning from a very sunny day here in Europe. So before I say anything else, uh, first of all, this is not a sponsored video, okay? There's no sponsorship affiliation commission or anything uh, of that uh, way, shape or form. This is just purely uh, my personal opinion, okay? Uh, so a little while ago, I did a video where I compared a Domata Proline 7, uh, this one here, um, with a entry-level IKEA pen. And, um, and the response to that video has been pretty good. I know I was happy to see that the video helped uh, quite a few people. Um, you know, they found that it was informative. And, um, and I thought I'll do a full, well, not really a follow up video, um, but more of a separate video where I purely talk about the Proline 7 fry pans. And that's because, you know, these pans are so good um, that I think they deserve to have their own video. And the first thing I want to say is that these pans are easily the best fry pans I have ever used. Um, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say, you know, it's the best piece of cookware I've used. Um, although that might be true, um, you know, because obviously different cookware serve different different um, purposes. Um, these fry pans are absolutely fantastic, and I really look forward to using these. You know every time I cook with them or every time I plan to cook with them okay so in this video I'm a few things I've already talked about in the previous video um, but um, but there there is some uh, some new information or some some you know some some new things just with my impression on these on these pairs yeah so let's get the paperwork out of the way and that's the basic specifications uh, so let's talk about size. So this is a 32 centimeter model and this is a 28 centimeter model. And the, and the one important thing I want to mention with the size is that these are very, very big for a typical 28 and 32 centimeter pen. Okay, especially with this one. And I have to warn you, do not underestimate how big this pen is. Um, you know, maybe it's not that clear on camera, but when you pick it up in person, it's going to be enormous. Okay, so Demeda, they were very, very generous with what they call a 32 centimeter pen um, because this thing is, is not, noticeably bigger than your typical 12 inch or 12 and a half inch fry pen or stainless steel skillet. Okay, um, and when, when they measure the 32, it's really from the very inside to the very inside. Okay, okay, and uh, you've got to be mindful that, you know, this thing may be too big, especially for an electric hob. I mean, I, I have, I, I mostly use an electric hob. I also have a portable gas stove. And whenever I use this pen, I actually use a portable gas stove because even for the biggest hob I have on my electric stove, um, it's still not quite big enough for this pen. So it, you know, there's about a two centimeter, um, uh, two centimeters of, of the, of the, um, of the diameter or oh, in fact four because you know this side and this side so the hob is only about this big and that's not really good for the pen okay so first of all please make sure that if you want to buy this 32 centimeter model uh, just check if um, it is if it's not too big for your for your stove uh, whether it's gas electric or induction or whatever okay and also on the subject of size um, this as well so both of these 28 and 32 they are very big for their respective diameters. This 28 centimeter pan, it's almost as big as, you know, your typical 12 inch skillet from other manufacturers. And it could mean that this is gonna be big enough for you uh, most of the time, if not all the time. So on this one, on the 28 model, um, you get about 23 centimeters of flat cooking surface. And on this one, you get about uh, 26. Okay, so that's really big. And for my personal use, I find myself using the 28 centimeter model eight out of 10 times uh, because it is big enough um, for most of my needs, even when I want to do a fairly big batch of uh, vegetables. Okay. So, um, yeah, so just, just be aware that these, these are big, big, big pans. And next, uh, it's the uh, weight of these pans. 
Okay, so again, these pants are very, very heavy and very, very thick. So the weight on the 28 centimeter model is 2.36 kilograms. And that's very heavy. Okay, and that's, um, in fact, that's heavier than um, your, that's, that's heavier than your typical 12 inch, 12 and a half inch skillets, often even, you know, with an even bigger size, um, because how much metal there is in this pan. Okay, and on this one is 2.74 kilograms. Okay, so very, very heavy. And at 4.8 millimeters, so the thickness of the pan is 4.8 millimeters, and it's also very, very thick. And I'm pretty sure that this is the thickest um, skillet pan you can buy on the market. Okay, so it's certainly the thickest pan that I've ever, ever seen. Okay. All right, so I think that's um, that's that, that's the specifications, the paperwork, out of the way. So let's talk about my general impressions. Uh, so with these pens, I really really enjoy using them. Um, I I don't know what it is. I, I think it's a combination of various factors um, that the manner has managed to design this pen, so it is very very enjoyable to use. You know, it, it, for me, it's the it's the combination of the very nice finished surface, the shiny surface, the very good weight, and also the beautiful, really beautiful uh, cooking performance. Okay, so these pans, because they are so heavy, because they are so thick, there is a lot of thermal mass. Uh, so it does mean that it's gonna take a little bit longer uh, for it to heat up on any stove at the same setting. You know, in my previous video, I compared this one to a, a, a entry-level IKEA stainless steel pan of roughly the same size. And um, this one, it took approximately one minute longer uh, at the same heat setting to reach the same temperature. Okay. And in terms of the temperature distribution, um, in my opinion, it's always going to be better on gas. Okay, but let's um, let's talk about the case with the electric stove. Uh, on the biggest electric hob I have, again, the bigger the hob, the better your temperature distribution, or the even more even uh, that your temperature distribution is going to be. Okay, so I mean, in my case, I do not have an ideal sized hob for this pan, and what I found was that uh, with an electric hob, the temperature difference from the center to the very edge can be as high as about 45 to 50 degrees. Um, but once you put the food in, and once you give it more time to reach the same temperature, um, sorry, to take that back, once you give it more time for the temperature to just, you know, flow, heat to flow outwards, especially with a food in the pan, then the temperature becomes much more even, okay? And as you can imagine, this one with a smaller diameter on the same electric hob, uh, which is pretty good for this pen because the hob it does cover basically all of the bottom surface. Um, uh, during the initial heating stage, the, the difference between the center and the edge is about 25 degrees, and that's pretty good. Okay, especially compared to a cast iron. If I put my cast iron on the same hob, you know, for the cast iron, I get as much as 70, 80, or even 100 degrees from the center to the edge, and that's not that desirable. Okay. So, I mean, I always think it's better on a gas hob, but if you're gonna use an electric hob, just make sure that, you know, your pan is not too big for the size of the hob that you have. Okay. Now, because it's got so much weight and so much thickness, um, the, it, it's absolutely fantastic for searing. Okay. Just to give you an example, in this pan, um, in this 28 centimeter model, uh, with a two point, almost 2.4 kilograms of mass, I was able to beautifully sear uh, 10 chicken, chicken drumsticks or chicken legs at the same time. So I basically filled the pan with 10 chicken drumsticks. And that was not too much for the pan, you know, you, you were, I was still able to get that consistent, very nice sounding sizzle, you know, that's music to my ears, with this pan, with a big lot of chicken and that's for me is very very impressive okay so extremely good heat retention due to the thickness and, and the mass now what I normally do is I um, okay I think what I'll do is I, I did say in one of my previous videos I'm not gonna do any 
cooking videos, but uh, can, maybe I'll do one or two. Uh, what I do is, um, you know, if you have a better technique, please comment down below. I I don't heat the pan on the highest setting. I use I use about seventy to eighty percent of the of the you know the maximum heat available, and. I wait for the center of the pan to get to around, you know, if I'm searing a big lot of meat, for example. I wait to the center of the pan to, go, to get to around 220 to 30 centigrade, right, degrees Celsius, which, and that would mean that the edge of the pan is around 200, okay. And at that temperature, um, I find that I usually will not overload the pan. So even with 10, you know, 10 cold, um, chicken drumsticks, it was able to handle it. Okay, and you know if you're cooking vegetables, okay, you can you know use a little bit lower, uh, lower heat setting. Um, but still, once the food goes into the pan, and this is very important, you have to not touch it. Okay, you have to not touch it for the first at least the first two to three minutes, and that's going to give it time for the face of the food to sear, you know, to give you that brown caramelization, to get the font on the bottom. And that's how you will not end up steaming your food, okay? It doesn't matter if you're cooking with chicken or cooking with vegetables. That's the technique, or that's the technique that I use. Okay, so yeah, so what I think I'll do is I'll, maybe I'll do one or two quick videos just to show, um, you know, searing of some meat on this pan or on this pan on the electric or gas hob, okay? And, and that might be helpful to some people. Uh, and cleaning. Now these pans are extremely easy to use, okay, and they are also extremely easy and enjoyable to clean. Okay, not everybody enjoys cleaning their cookware. I I, I do myself because I enjoy getting that shine back. Now most of the time, um, because of the I, I don't know exactly why, but because of the machining and the texture of the surface. I find that I don't even have to use detergent even when I cook oily food. Okay, I, I mean I still use a little bit, um, but you know when you run your fingers across the, the surface of the pan, uh, if it's slippery, it means there's still some oil residue on it, and you know you, then you may need to should use some detergent. But even when I don't use the detergent and I just use a bit of water and you know, scrub it with a you know abrasive sponge, and I run my finger across it, and I still don't get a slippery texture. So, I mean, I don't know exactly how the man manages to do that. Um, but these pans are certainly very enjoyable to use and very enjoyable to clean. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to mention with these pans is um, a couple of disadvantages. Okay. Uh, the first thing that uh, is, a, is a slight dislike for me is the handle. Um, and I've also mentioned this in my pre previous video. Uh, the handle is, I mean, it's beautifully machined and you know, definitely a high-end, high-class handle. Um, but I find that it's a bit too slippery, just for my personal, just, you know, in my personal opinion. And um, it doesn't give me as much grip as I would like, especially with the 30, this 32 version, because it's so big and heavy. Um, I find that if I go more than halfway, uh, I, I need to use the halber handle to get, um, you know, to get a better, more secure grip. And this thumb rest to me is kind of useless because if I actually use it, then I actually get less grip with my hand than if I don't use it. So what I do is I actually hold it, hold the handle, you know, on, on the low end where this white, where where this fork is, and if I hold it like that, then it gives me a much steadier grip. And one thing that's that might be interesting is, um, well, you see, on the twenty-eight centimeter model. Um, you actually also get a help helper handle, and that's not something you see in a lot of other pans, or in maybe even basically all the other pans of the same size. And the reason for that is obviously because this pan is so heavy for its size that the maker decided to to put, to put a helper handle here, and that is a good idea. Okay, I also think you know it makes the pan look better. Um, so. Yeah, just, you know, because this is so heavy that <laughs> even for a smaller size, they thought that, you know, people might want a bit of extra support. Um, and the second advantage, disadvantage, sorry, the second disadvantage that I can think of 
is um, is just the weight. Okay, so for me, it's a benefit. It's a plus. I like a bit, I like my pants as heavy as possible. Well, within reason. Um, but if you really don't like heavy cookware, then yeah, you could find. In fact, you will probably find that these pants are too heavy for you. Okay, because nobody. Um, really expects you know the average person who, who doesn't know a lot about you know cookware uh, you wouldn't expect the, these pans to be that heavy in fact you wouldn't expect any piece of cookware to be this heavy okay so that could be a detriment to some people okay so um yeah so i hope that video has been this video has been help, helpful i just wanted to make a quick video because i like these pans so much i enjoy them every time i cook with them um, and um, and I, these are really lifetime lifetime pens, and I couldn't be happier with my investment. Sorry, just maybe I just quickly talk about the price. Um, in Europe, this one you could pick up at a discount discounted price of anywhere between one fifty to one seventy euros, which I think is fantastic, especially if you consider that you know a, a fancy non-stick pen will cost you will still cost you a hundred euros, and that could last what two years. Um, or you could spend 150 euros on this pen and it will last your lifetime. So you tell me which is the better, you know, which is the better way to go. And this one anywhere between 170 to around 200 euros. Okay, so again, absolutely fantastic value for the money that you spend. Okay, so um, yeah, like I said, you know, I, these are these are so good, so good that I thought, okay, I should probably do a separate video on these. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next, uh, in, uh, next video.